All right, so uh, first step we want to do is uh, measure out 10 grams of dried leaves and these are sufficiently dry for a long time and uh, I've got this balance zeroed out with this very large beaker here and we'll uh, just put the leaves in there. They are very brittle and we don't need the stems or the roots so we're just doing the leaves. about one gram so far. They normally grow really well in the spring. Right around now is when you find all of these periwinkles uh, flowering. And it's kind of considered an invasive species. If you grow it, um, the roots spread and it's almost like a vine. Where I used to live, there was a lot of ivy in my backyard and um, periwinkle actually was competing quite well with it, starting to spread around. Starting to steal the sunlight from all of the ivy which is a more pleasant, this is more of a pleasant plant to look at than ivy in my opinion. Which is certainly an invasive species here in the East Coast. All right, got like three grams, so. Just trying not to make a huge mess here all over the place. The school's still closed because of the pandemic and I'm not really sure how often the housekeeping staff make it into this room to sweep and mop and things like that. Okay, we got five grams. All right, so let's get a reading on this. And these leaves here are rather brittle and um, kind of easy to grind up. Um, This could be placed into a mortar and pestle. You know, I, I got one here, but these are extremely dry leaves, so I'm thinking that they'll just, the powder will go everywhere. So I'll just kind of um, gently mash it up. A coffee grinder um, or a blender would work really well in something like this. 
course, these uh, Vinca alkaloids are somewhat toxic, so you want to make sure you wash your kitchen equipment out before you uh, use it for anything else. If you do decide to use your blender or your coffee grinder, That's good enough there. And I'm gonna transfer that to a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask that has a, a little magnetic stir bar in there. For this, we'll use this very scientific piece of uh, apparatus known as piece of paper, just to uh, guide the transfer here, okay? Probably a bigger flask is warranted here, but we'll just go ahead and do this anyway. Powder funnel might be nice. Uh, let me see if I've got one here handy on this side of the lab. So these things are called powder funnels because it has a very large opening about you know almost a centimeter and so if you've got a powder usually just falls right on through some of these leaves might get stuck and I might have to uh, kind of poke them through with a watch glass or stirring rods so I can see dust going everywhere all right so that's that So now, uh, put some alcohol in here, okay, maybe 50 milliliters, maybe or so. I haven't really thought through the procedure here exactly, because I don't want to use large amounts of solvent. So let's go ahead and weigh that, measure that out. So we'll try 50 milliliters of uh, denatured ethanol and see how that looks. We might need to add more. So we'll... Transfer that here. Not being super accurate, um, that might be 50.5 or something, 51, but that's about 50 milliliters. And so we'll add that in here. You can see how it barely wetted the, the leaves there. The uh, level of the liquid is not even up to the top there. Barely. Okay, so I'm going to add 50 uh, more of this. Okay. So a total of 100 milliliters of uh, ethyl alcohol for our almost 10 grams of dried leaves, okay? So that's pretty high up there now, and uh, we might be able to get a uh, kind of a slurry action with the uh, stir plate, okay? So I'm gonna grab a cork and uh, some aluminum foil. We wanna do this in the dark so that no photochemical reactions or decomposition occurs. We'll cork it, tightly pack it. We'll put in the fume hood on a stir plate for um, you know, overnight, like 48 hours if we can, okay? So let me get that going. So I found a cork um, here. Um, it's, it's dangerously close to uh, falling in. You kind of want to have a little bit more height on it, but I don't have that equipment. And there's a magnetic stir bar in there, remember? So just at room temperature, we'll get this stirring if we can. Getting these stir bars going can be kind of tricky. You don't want to do it too fast. 
um, all of a sudden. So I think that's good. I could not find my aluminum foil, so I'm just gonna turn the light off here and the lights will be off in the room. But I'll leave the light on here so you can kind of see what it looks like. I'm not going to film this for 48 hours and then fast forward. I'm just gonna come back after a couple days and let you see what it looks like, okay? So I'll just let you take a look at it for a few minutes here to see what it looks like. Okay, that's the basics of step one. Ethanol is extracting um, all of those uh, lipids, the waxes and things like that. Any kind of organic molecules that are soluble in ethanol like chlorophyll and so on are being extracted. So it's gonna be a horrendous mess, but um, we'll do TLC analysis and take a look at those uh, vinca alkaloids. Um, stay tuned, we'll be back in a couple days and we'll proceed with the next steps at that time.